welcome to day two of the Goodwood Members Meeting. Yesterday we were treated to some of the incredible sights and sounds that make this event so special. It was a feast for our eyes and ears, from the Via engines of the Mustangs to the vintage power of the SFH Trophy, and the incredible noise from these monstrous can -Ams. And we're only just getting started. As the revs rise and we get ready to go racing, the Parnell Cup is underway. A poor start from Nigel Bachelor, who bogs down and gets absolutely swamped. But a good start from our pole sitter, Will Nuttall. But John Yore is going to try and sweep round the outside. Can Yore and the other Cooper take the lead going into Madrick? I think he has done. Yore from second on the grid leads this race, but Nuttall slots in right behind. He's not going to give this one up. Looks to the inside as they now approach Ford Water. Can he get alongside? No. Tucks in behind. Yore leads. But a poor start, Bruce, from Nigel Batcher on the front row as well. Surely that should have been his lead, but John York is not letting him through. But now Will Nuttall's in front. But again, it's the point of where's the next corner coming? And with it all covered, John York goes back in front. What's happening in the rest of the race? I can watch these two race all day. There's a little bit of constriction there. And uh... Yor's going to speed around the outside. Is he going to be able to do this on the final lap? Traffic holding back. Will Nuttall, Yor gets onto the grass. The rear end sticks out. He manages to keep control. Will Nuttall could he have lost it on the final lap? The checkered flag didn't come out. It will now be out and waving. Will Nuttall will take the flag and will take the win. But he nearly lost it at the end. Half a second between Will Nuttall and John Yore. The two Coopers fighting it out all race long. But in the end, it is three Parnell Cup wins for Will Nuttall. Derek Bell, pole position again. Um, so many memories behind you and on this circuit as well. Well, yeah, just a few. The first of my life is here well, with the Lotus 7 and then I, you know, had Formula 3 here and had lap records and won the races. So, you know, Goodwood's my home and it's wonderful. Absolutely mir miraculous. Really. Round the outside, sweet round. He does. Keeps his foot planted to the floor. Delaroche in the 75. Alexis Ford back into the lead. We've got a car spinning out wide. That's the 83. Further back in the pack, finding the grass and into uh, the, the shrubbery along with a couple of other cars there as well. The 88 finding that was Richard Trott in the Brabham too. So a few cars off early doors. 20 minutes gone already down to 19. Started down in 26. He's peeled off in his Brabham. Uh, move though being done for second position as O'Brien cements the lead further back. It's Andrew Hibbard coming through on Delaroche. Uh, Hibbard in the Brabham making the move on the Alexis. So Delaroche down to third now. O'Brien in the Titan leads coming through and out of the final chicane. Then comes Andrew Hibbard in the Brabham. And then in third now, Peter Delaroche in the Alexis. Which still nip and tuck with Andrew Hibbard in third in the Brabham. Then comes Jeremy Tim and then Spagliari as we get the safety car. So the Porsche safety car out on track. Now we have a red flag thrown. Uh, and so all the cars will come back round and they will form back on the grid. This is Dan Eagling who went off and then a couple of other cars followed him. Richard Trott certainly followed onto the grass, not into the rough stuff where Dan Eagling ended up in that ex Pico Troberg car at St Mary's but plenty of runoff down there and uh, evasive action from those behind but the front three they had it absolutely nailed what a brilliant start and in third on the far right in the yellow Alexis Ford mark 17 Peter Delaroche and we are back racing another poor start from our pole sitter Michael O'Brien even start from Hibbard and Delaroche who's going to come out and top into turn one it's going to be Andrew Hibbard with Delaroche squeezing round the outside the yellow flag is out no overtaking through Magic so that cement Hibbard's position out in front, Delaroche in second, but another poor start from Michael O'Brien, you can see there the number 8 now trying to calm his way back through the field, and they've got the march of Andy Jarvis also scrapping at the sharp end of the field. This is a cracking race, and, and certainly Pitted and Laroche doesn't mind hooking a wheel on the grass here and there, at the very point that Andrew Hibbard went through into second place last time, quick into lap, it doesn't mean quick out of the second part, and then you're going to struggle up the lap and straight, but this time... It's the Alexis on the inside and forcing to go to the outside. O'Brien, he'll come through. He's not a race leader, he's a race winner now. That's the Derek Bell Cup. Who's going to come through in second place? It's going to be the Brabham, surely, of Andrew Hibbard. But we've seen drag races to the line. It's very close. One car length between him and the Alexis and Peter De La Roche. They will have enjoyed that. Watching Glenn English on the left. Dan Jackson in the middle. And it's a good start from Glenn and Dan. A pretty even start, I thought, from both of those front row men. It's Dan Jackson who's got the initial lead. But watch out for Glenn English. Number 20. 
35. He's so brave, particularly through this first quarter match when sometimes he, oh, somebody hand, hand up, bit of a problem. And in fact, it's Phil Atkinson. So there I am saying it was going to be Glenn. Phil Atkinson, who won yesterday, surges through. Yeah, oh no. That's, oh, that is bad a, news, Andy that's Hornby. A, that's Andy Hornby. Obviously, he's won it the last couple of years here and going so well. Uh, was fourth on the grid and he's had a, a problem, which is very unlike them. Have a little look. as he, There's a big bump on the left. Is he going to lose the front? Oh, he just seems to run out of road. He's got in a little bit too hot. And luckily, the grass is uh, the grass is dry. He does very well, though. It's very easy to make a mistake. Panic there, and he does incredibly well. Gets it back on, and where's he rejoined? I think he's in third still. Actually, I think he's I think he's up there. Really good. We have a red flag. Unfortunately, we have... we've got a red flag here. Yeah, um, they're coming back in. Here they go. Then, and you just saw uh, Graham Higlett coming in, number 51, in that fantastic battle that he's having with Michael Russell for the Barry Sheen uh, part of the trophy, and uh, we'll just have to see how that goes once the race resumes. As I say, there's due to be three laps to go whether they'll um, make it all three we'll have to wait and see there's a originally a seven lap race uh, that's how it runs with these two part races and then it's all added together to work out who are outright winners are for the weekend we've just heard this moment that the race will not be restarted so that is the result now that we have after four laps we now know that phil atkinson took two victories so Phil Atkinson has won very good lap there's no doubt about it the lap that he did yesterday 122.4 was over a second faster than anybody else uh, he is a very much uh, a front runner champion in the British Championship in 2018 and together they won it in 2020 Ryan uh, Charlwood joining him a little bit later on there was a bit of wheel spin going on there wasn't there yeah, they're going to watch you here. We saw a few guys just clip the barrier, a little bit of a wheel lift, and let's have a look as they come to the line. What's it going to be? Is he going to beat his 22-4? Across the line he goes, he's 121.9. Yeah, that's fantastic. So that's the first we've seen is the 121s. And listen to it just spin a bit there, maybe cost him a fraction of time. That was great, though. I, I thought he might even run a bit too wide oh. there, but she's right in, moving so quickly to get into the right place. It's going to be a good one, this. How quick is it? Let's have a look. 121.6. They go faster. <laughs> oh, that is um, you're going to have to find a little bit more, I guess, for this afternoon. Where's that going to come from? Uh, I don't know. He just tried to uh, put a bit more speed and just try to hide himself a bit more and just put everything that we've got. <laughs> we were talking earlier that you basically you can't obviously you can't look where you're going so you do everything through little markers on the track are you getting all those set now yeah that's it or sometimes i can have a look if i'm not sure but yeah because it's so fast you get a lot of wind and more you get low less you get wind and more you go faster so yeah just try to do our best and yeah go faster and we're about to go racing for the certes trophy and the flag flies and we are racing a great start a brilliant start from third place man andrew Cagoldi in the chevron away and well so good a start he got heading into magic with a gap in front of him it looks like to me that 1.7 gap is starting to close is this where it starts to uh, make up time? Spears now up into second spot. So he is picking them off one by one after his tough start from pole position. We're looking at the 2016 European Le Mans champion, Alex Brundle, the number one for GT40, just in front of Ben Mitchell in the Chevron, the all white Chevron, chasing down the black number one GT40. Brundle, you can see there, having a quick look to his left hand mirror to see where that car is. So Cacaldi leads, but that gap is coming down. It is coming down. However, timing screens, I know the move's just taken place. 10 second penalty for Andrew Cacoldi for a false start. So we'll have another look. I mean, he's lost the lead now. A move has taken place by Spears is through, but that's going to drop him way down the order. Currently, that would drop him all the way outside the top 10. And he is absolutely wringing the neck of that Ford GT40. It's the number one car that contains Brundle. Lock up from Cacoldi down the inside in the Chevron on Brundle, Brundle's rear end sticks out. He controls it nicely, but Brundle down the position, down to fourth. Cacoldi coming back. And now Ian Simmons in second, Cacoldi third, Brundle fourth, but Brundle with all the power, almost 468 brake horsepower in that GT40. Now back in front of the Chevron of Cacaldi. What a fight this is. Back markers coming into play for the two Chevrons though, and it's getting tight and tighter. Bellinger 
now embroiled in an absolute battle with the two chevrons behind. Bellinger holding out for the time being. Cacoldi's going to be coming under pressure from Mitchell in the 95. All white chevron is going to make it round the outside. They close right up under braking to Bellinger in front, who's in the Cooper. And it's Cacoldi who wins out the chevron fight because Mitchell has to run out onto the grass through the chicane. Another lap of that, please. I'll take it very much so. And more pain for Alex Grundle, who's sliding down the order once again after being He's up into pit. second. Did he come into the pit? I think so, yeah. So, oh, it's so close to contact. There is the 129. Bellinger's no. off. Bellinger off into the grass and also the other one as well, just skating off into the grass, but manages to rejoin. That's the Lola of Simmons. They were all so close to each other, absolutely pushing to the limit. It was only a matter of time before something went wrong. From. But because Kokoldi, that's the car we're looking at now, has the 10 second penalty, Ben Mitchell, all he needs to do is to stick right behind him and second his. Leader, leader spun, that's John Spears in the McLaren, the 96. The pole sitter, the race leader, has spun. He had a sizable gap, but has that not cost him the lead of this race? I think it has done. And that means Kakoldi now finds himself back into the lead of this race with a 10 second time penalty. Ben Mitchell in the other Chevron is seven tenths behind him. All he needs to do is stay within 10 seconds and he's going to win this race if he can hold on to it for the next two minutes. Let's see what happened to our race leader. Is it going to be contact there? Possibly. I said the back markers would come into play. And it looks like, I mean, he had some kind of contact the with the four. number four. That's the uh, the Korat chant for GT40, yeah, another one of our your back marker. And uh, he had over a 12-second gap as well. So he was obviously just desperate to, to try and make his way through. Through the chicane then, one final time to see off the Surtees Trophy. And what a race that has been. Andrew Cacoldi will take the checkered flag first, but with penalty applied, it will be the chevron of Ben Mitchell who takes the race win. John Spears, who started on pole, a poor start, led this race for so long, spinning out, will have to settle for second. And then the 1-1. One seven, the loner of Ian Simmons will round down the podium. Kakoldi with the penalty applied comes home in fourth. I have no idea what happened. It was all going on around me. I was just trying to keep my head down, go a little bit quicker um, and, and look after myself. But it got very busy at times and there was a couple of times when I had a bit of space and I could actually think a little bit. Um, but no, fantastic race and uh, yeah, aw awesome circuit and just really pleased to be here. Craig Davies sharing that car with Darren Turner in the red Mustang. On the far left, as you see it, will start on pole. Alongside it, Martin Whitaker Jr. Then it'll be Mark Matheson. Good start, though, uh, from Davies and Matheson. Poor start from Whitaker in the middle. It looks like everybody just about got away. A slow starter at the back, but through into turn one as they make their way through Madwick. Davies with the initial grunt off the line in the all-red number nine car. The pole sits a holding force at the top. They come across the line. Six laps completed in the yellow Mustang. Sandy Prio side by by side coming through Madwick. Can he hold it? The Mustangs door to door, stepping out, sliding the rear for Davies, keeping his foot in it, holding forth. So much pressure going up against a driver like Andy Priu. Priu in the yellow 99 Mustang, bringing Alex Bunker in the 15 along for the ride as we're well. Get, so we're going to get three wide, Harry. Looks, oh, just so close. Sorry, going into St. Mary's there. Bunker goes, thank you very much. The typical junior karting style. Here we go. So they'll both be used to having to make changes changes in these cars had to do it yesterday in the Gordon Spice Trophy out slides Fred in goes Timo great effort from Fred, Fred Shepard has to be said oh and all over the back oh uh, this is the uh, number 116 oh. car on board getting oh so close shedded at the wheel absolutely wringing the neck off that Mustang. Through he goes. And we've got a car in the wall at the chicane. It's the number 14 Mustang Ash with Sutton. Ash Sutton at the wheel who's found the chicane facing the wrong way. Yellow flag, everyone being instructed to straight line it. I wonder, has there been contact with another car? I think we're about to see how it happened coming into the chicane. Yeah, and I think it has moved. Let's have a look. The barriers across, and I mean, the daffodils got a great view, didn't they? <laughs>
uh, and until they, did. they didn't, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, but <laughs> scattered now all over the floor. And yeah, that has moved the uh, the barrier and oh, just managing to miss. There was the number 70 car. 79, I think that's Marino. 79 car. At the wheel of and that. we have got the safety car out, which I expected because they were all, of course, having to cut the chicane. The marshals looking out the commentary box window are doing an incredible job. The 60th anniversary of the Ford Mustang. Ooh. One stricken Mustang in the background. The remainder making their way down the start finish straight now. And it's a good start, good restart for Andrew Jordan, who's got a jump on the field. Darren Turner and Gordon Shedden neck and neck coming through, through Madrick. It's Gordon Shedden chasing down Darren Turner. There. You don't know where to look at the moment, do we? There's battles all oh, along. Oh, here comes Huff down the inside. That'll become the outside. Can the number 19 of Ingram hold it round? Oh. There's a little bit of contact door to door between the two Mustangs. You can just see how hard they are fighting the wheels of these Mustangs. It's so tight at the moment. Huff through on Frank Keating, gets the move done. Can he control it under braking? Yes, he can. But Frank Keating won't give this one up without a fight. But he has to settle behind as it's one by one through the chicane. Out of the chicane. The rear end steps out. You can see the fist out of the window. The winner of the Ken Miles Cup, it's Andrew Jordan. Trophy is underway for the second time here at the Goodwood Members Meeting as ever. It's a slow getaway for Mark Walker, but it doesn't mean the race is over. We've got a car stopped, unfortunately. It didn't get away at all. And actually, it's a really good start by Neil Goff. Uh, there we are. It's getting away now. Number 17, Francois van der Straten Pontos. Now we're used to with pedals, but a lot of them have the, the handles. Here we go then. He's got the opportunity now to take second place, Mark Walker. And there is really an opportunity. Eight seconds, 8.9 seconds, the two of them, behind the race leader now. He always has to break earlier than the Sunbeam, but he should get his nose in front. Here comes the kink. Here we go. This is a battle really beginning for the win here. And Mark Walker's got alongside, but you may well see Julian come back down the inside through this section because he can be going through the course, but Mark's got that position. Absolutely vital. Can Julian try and challenge coming into the chicane? I don't think he's going to be able to this time because Mark Walker made a better start. And although Julian can't do much, look at the speed as they come out of the chicane. Once again, Mark Walker has taken victory. It's won all this year after Mark won both by tiny amounts. But of course, the outright victory for the event depends on who was first by the by how much amount. yesterday. Right, the, the, the margin that needed to, defend it, to be defended was 2.25 seconds. So incoming just under 1.2 seconds now. Julian Majoub has just had enough in the bag to take the aggregate victory. Uh, always excellent to see the SF Edge trophy. And uh, now we're going for something just rather more modern because we're getting into the Gordon Murray uh, cars that are coming back out on circuit. Pause start from pole position and it's a poor start from James Thorpe in the Vitorini, but Alex 
Duncan. From pole is soaring into the lead. Miles Griffiths is following him to second place. You're on board with Nigel Greensill now in the Little Lotus as he tries to take advantage. And somebody just ran wide uh, outside of him there. Uh, whether that's going to come back, I think it has come back. Yeah, so that's all right. Uh, there in the background, I'm just keeping an eye on James Thorpe. The second of these two you're looking at in the Bitsarini. And then we're looking at Nigel Greensill, who's coming under more pressure from Ollie Bryant. These two very different cars, the Lotus versus the Porsche, both uh, much less powerful than many of the cars around them. Both super talented drivers. This could turn out to be a wonderful little uh, duel between them. Yeah, you can see how hard they were pushing because Nigel Greensall isn't known as the, the last of the breakers for nothing, but he really went beyond his breaking point into wood. So uh, this Griffith TV. Now this is a replay of the yeah. move where the Porsche with Ollie Bryant decided outside good, inside better. So took the inside line, moved past Nigel Greensall, got the move done into Ford Water. Now I would have Oh, change of lead. We've just seen a mistake from Alex Buncombe, and this is what happened. Miles Griffiths nipped through. Miles Griffiths has just got through. We've got the spin as well for the number 78. E type. Whoa, round and round. Well, has Paul. someone dropped some liquid? That was William Paul going for a yeah. move. Now, was this because of bank markers and just a misread from our race leader, Alex Buncombe? Did he have to adjust his line? He <laughs> recovered remarkably well. He's still in second place, but uh, certainly that means Murray Shepard will be a little bit closer in third. But now, unfortunately for him, he's stuck behind that wonderful four car battle between the Corvette Stingrays and the Mustangs. He's picking his way through that. He's still got one of the Corvettes to put behind him but one little slip up and suddenly a lead of what he was a second he's had a three and a half second swing actually could have been a whole lot more than that but he's lost the lead well that is amazing oh, that was all a bit close as well but that really has helped Miles Griffiths he's now leading the race by quite a decent margin when you look at drive across a driver's CV lots of drivers win races but very few win championships and even fewer win multiple championships so Nigel Greensall certainly has had an illustrious career thus far yeah and over 100 lap records in his career as well uh, not that they all still hold of course but he's taken them. look at this he's got alongside he's got alongside Ollie Bryant giving Ollie a little wave but I'm not sure he will still be in front let's see yeah and he's got position at the moment uh, he's now checking his mirrors okay Ollie where are you going oh he's actually waving him is he or not no he's holding him off at this point now they're doing some lapping oh the e-type goes off that was a moment ago sorry that e-type went off that they were just lapping that was McFadden who made a little error thankfully didn't get tied up uh, so still going well there Ollie Bryant but uh, well but Ollie Bryant behind Nigel Greensall but both of them still trying to take on Bill Shepard now this is where things do vary a little bit because if you have to end up lifting oh he's down the inside oh he's having a little look oh my goodness that was tight what inside Ben the door was closed but lock up in from the AC Cobra Bill Shepard will be getting a little warm under the collar now and again the better exit from the second of the Lamont corners so it's working out very very well for Miles Griffiths in the TVR Griffith with his name yeah, one letter, what's one letter between friends? Griffith, Griffiths, but it's been spectacular. And again, it's just great to have two cars that look so incredibly different, trading lap times to within a tenth of a second. They've put way clear of the best of the rest. That's Adrian Wilmot having moved finally up into third place. But here comes the run to the final, final flag. The Graham Hill Trophy goes the way of Miles Griffith after a wonderful battle with Alex Buncombe. But it's... making his way down into turn one. Can he hold on to the lead? Yes, he can, but it's a decent start for the 51. Timothy Dutton round the outside. Can he hold on to it? Getting a little bit of a wiggle on the rear. Has to slot back in behind. Matt Walton in the Bugatti Type 51 has had a great start as well. But on this lap, on lap three, Tim Dutton is just falling away a little bit in that fantastic red and black livery Type 51. Nipping and tucking. Car 44 just at the tail of the top ten. That's Bruce Stops. 
just looking in his mirrors to see who's in behind him. He's had William Way near him. He's got a couple behind him. So great racing down the order. It's remarkable. This is one of our closest practice sessions of the lot. The top four covers by eight tenths of a second on the grid. Uh, and oh, an issue. And having to use the crankshaft to get it going again. Which one is that? It's the 46 car. So uh, that is uh, further back in the pack and dropping all the way down now. That is a Bewley uh, at the wheel of that in the Bugatti Type 35A. Philip Bewley really well, getting out and uh, trying to get it started again. Are we about to see what happens? Well, spin out of the chicane, rotates one way, sees the, sees the grandstands, and then gets to see the grandstands looking the other way across the track. But unfortunately, <laughs> almost a, a zero-speed spin at the end. Beautiful slow-mo there, but then <sighs> to stall it, have to hop out of the car, don't have any belts to undo. Uh, has he got it going as yet? No, I'm not he's got no, he hasn't car. as yet. So that's sitting at the side of the track. We have a safety car being brought out onto the track because of that spun uh, Philip Bewley car. So we can look at this either way. This obviously completely closes the gap up. So that six second gap uh, that Pitway had is gone as we've got a wheel off uh, for the number three. And that's Charlie Martin. And the Bugatti Type 35B was up into the top five. Martin, a prolific historic racer, having to pull to the side one tire down oh there's the wheel and the drive shaft as well the grover williams trophy for 1920 grand prix cars celebrating the 90th anniversary of the bugatti type 35 julian majub is the first lead blue car the alfa romeo of christopher mann is a lap down and gets out the way very nicely uh, to allow the traffic through and we are back underway and racing julian majub leads the way right second place is it pitaway or dutto the answer is it is pitaway yeah, there's been a move for second big move for second because he's not only caught him he's remember one and a 1.2 seconds now he's now 1.3 seconds up so he caught he passed and he's pulling away so duncan pitaway started second fell to fourth back to second place but i don't think in six and a half minutes he's in the claw back 10 seconds off our race leader through fourth four to duncan pitaway perhaps getting a tiny little bit of a toe along there is uh Getting closer, closer, now going down the inside and looks by uh, Ford Water, he's got through. Now, what's next on the lap? Of course, St Mary's so, so tricky, particularly the turning in. Duncan Pitway was magnificent there, but this race belongs to Julien Majou. It certainly does. It's looking still close for fourth and fifth at the moment. And uh, the Bugatti of Bill Clayton just knocking down the Alfa Romeo out of the top ten for the time being. But out of the final corner, it's been a superb drive for Julien Majou in the Bugatti Type 35B and he's uh, working the throttle on the hand as you would on a motorbike but he's using his feet for both the uh, gears and the brakes yes he's indeed he's coming in he, i think he's at least oh, a oh it's good it? really quite hot there but i think he's about a second and a half up on uh, on the um, christian christie so we'll have a little look as he comes in tucks in as the three-time champion crosses the line let's have a look at the time 121.616. Now, that is fractionally the fastest we've seen all weekend by uh, three hundredths of a second. And uh, as they come down, she's tucked in. She's going to look. She's on the upper handhold. And in seconds, she's going to swap. Reach right down to that lower handhold. Leg right up in the air. Can you get this right? Let's have a look. This is such a critical part. Oh, they were very nice. quick here earlier. And it's looking good again, isn't it? It is looking good. They got it. Oh, that's beautiful coming out of there. It's now a tuck and run to the line. Let's have a look. It's 121 six to beat across the line. They've come. And they've done it. They've done it. 121.174. And the victory goes to Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. What a fantastic run that was. That was a great lap. Todd, Emmanuel, um, I know you've won some world championships, but you will forever be the first sidecar winners at Goodwood. Ask spot on, no, we didn't know. Uh, I didn't ask what Ben's was, I said I didn't want to know what anyone else was doing, so I set my dash up, so I looked on my dash and seen my lap time and knew it was a bit quicker than this morning, but yeah, spot on. It's one for the bucket list, isn't it? To say that you've won at Goodwood, it's a fantastic achievement. It's as it was at the start of this race, 25 minutes and counting on the opening lap. The Maserati 250S has the advantage for now, but John Pearson in the Jack D-Type steams past him down the side it makes it look easy the straight line speed of the jag not a match for that maserati but is the maserati going to fight back takes a much tighter line to the apex actually compromises on the exit as they come into the chicane because now wilson has got the austin healy of jack rawls all over the back of him and they're bringing the cooper of michael harris of malcolm harrison along for the ride as well that's number two we go
Smith chasing down Jonathan Bailey in the Jag D-Type, which is all over the back of Gary Pearson in the Jaguar XK120 Mistral. Look at the shark fin on the back of that uh, Jonathan Bailey Jaguar D-Type. Such were the innovations at the time and the differences showcasing across the years. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Battle, though, for the lead has switched. It's Wilson, uh, who has now fallen behind Pearson, the Maserati behind uh, the, the, uh, the Jaguar. And here is what happened. It's the old yeller getting in the way once again. Well, not too much, but that was enough to unsettle the Maserati. And the more momentum was with Pearson, who now retakes the lead of this race. It's now advantage Jaguar. The Maserati is now in the hunt. It was Richard Wilson in that Maserati, which is now down in second, started on pole, got away well. The traffic, though, is playing havoc as the old yeller has an issue with uh, Ernest Nagamatsu at the wheel, pulls to the side. Mechanical issues suspected. Another one out of this race. And still the battle for the lead rages on down the inside, late on the brakes for Wilson in the Maserati. He gets the move up and in again on the grass. He does the rear end, steps out. He holds it together and somehow Richard Wilson, my word, what a move that was, gets the Maserati back in front of the Jag. We actually have got a close battle. He's slow, he's Argo. slow, he's slow. He's got this hand up in the air for Pearson. He's got an issue. Is he going to peel into the pits at the end of this lap? He comes out of the chicane. What's gone wrong for the Jaguar D-Type? As he comes into the pits, the battle for the lead is over for John Pearson. Great battle with John Pearson. Unfortunately, Pearson had to peel into the pits, and that led the way for Richard Wilson, who will come across the line and take the checkered flag to win the Peter Collins Trophy. The Maserati is victorious. Flag goes down, away go the Minis, good start, and as ever from the second row, good start from Nick Swift, but actually from Paul Larry Wall making a, a very good start, number 64, that is Larry, he's on the inside, but round the outside goes Nick Swift in the blue and white Mini, and he don't may be brave enough to go right round the outside here, look how close the Minis are, I love the way they wobble around through a fast corner like that, and it is Nick who's taken the lead. And look, they're almost blocking the faster, more powerful engines behind. And I said it to you, Ben, off air, that we were so excited, weren't we, to see uh, uh, these minis lining up on the front. It's getting ever so close, though, further on behind. Yeah, absolutely good. The, the, the Camaros are already forcing their way through. I think that James Thorpe is one of those. Uh, Jack Tetley certainly has made a good start, but I think... James Thorpe's made an even better one. So Nick Swift is in the advance. Oh, there's a contact between the Mini and a Rover. And that's our pole man, Larry. Oh, they make it to contact again. My goodness, I'm amazed they didn't get collected. The T-boned by a bunch more cars there. That's unfortunate on this opening lap. Nick Swift is still leading. Just as they were going into St. Mary's, the other Chevy, that was, that was a good move, but he just had the space uh, to get past the Rover. So that was where James Thorpe went through. Yeah, and now we're going to see here, he evades the scene, goes round the outside, and we do then, unfortunately, whilst we're watching this replay, looking out the commentary box window, looks like that we do have a red flag. Just waiting. The Gordon Spice sprint is underway, so it is Rupert Deeth away initially. Nick Swift once again trying to make a really good start in his blue and white mini. The Mazda starting from the back, but already that's a great start by Jack Tetley this time. Jack Tetley from what was the third row, but with sort of cars missing, he had a bit more uh, clearance in front of him. And Jack has already, there you are, you're riding on board with Jack now. You're looking back, he's got the lead of this race. And that intimidating image of having a Ford Mustang all over the rear of your car, especially when Fred Shepard is behind it, and it is the front is just having a little bit of a locker there into Levant's corner, and that's going to give the opportunity to Fred Shepard to go down the inside and take the lead. Fred Shepard's now leading the Gordon Spice sprint. He started back on the seventh row of the grid, but with six and a half minutes to go, he has now taken the lead. Yeah, the Chevy slides on past, but that's now Ford on the back. Craig Davis in the Mustang and running ever so slightly wide is Tetley. He is wringing the neck, absolutely, but it's not enough at the moment. Then further back there, we have Young, who's storming up behind in the Chevrolet Camaro, getting ever so close to the back of Tetley's car. 
Fred, he has driven an exceptional race. Uh, knows this car inside out, knows Goodwood inside out, and he has done a perfect race. It's been a short race, 12 minutes from where he started on the seventh row, but he's done an excellent job. He really has. They finished second in the longer race yesterday as the two-driver race, but it is Fred Shepard who takes victory in the sprint race in the... Uh, Excellent machine that has brought him all the way across the line. And uh, second place goes to James Cottingham. Third actually does go to Jack Tetley. Tetley, oh no, it is Davis, I thought it was. I can't believe I'm saying this. This is now goodbye from us at Goodwood. We are going to be looking forward to the Festival of Speed in July. We hope to see you there and then the revival later on in the year. So thank you so much for watching and for joining us here to celebrate the 81st members meeting.